Welcome, my friends, to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins, and this is kind of a you ask for it video. I had recently done a little watercolor painting where I also applied some pastels. I did a little speed demo that I put on Instagram and on my page, my personal page on Facebook, by the way, is The Art of Susan Jenkins, if you want to find me and follow me there. But I showed how I actually applied this clear liquid gesso to the watercolor paper. It's a great and easy way to make your own pastel surface. So I've done this before in other videos, but I know a lot of you guys wanted to see this again. So here is the full video, and I'm going to show you my products and lots more in this video tutorial. Okay, here is my set of watercolors. I'm using a set of Arteza 36 uh, little set. I like this little travel set. It's got the little thumb holder on the bottom. So if you're painting um, plein air outdoors, you, you can kind of hold it and open up your little pan so you can add your watercolors there. It's a nice little set. It's got some good colors too. I'm also using the Arteza watercolor paper. I'm using these products because Arteza is really great to me. They send me some free products to put in my videos. So hey, free is good, right? <laughs> so I'm also using a reference photo here. I just have it on my little iPad. Um, that is from pmp-art.com. And by the way, I'm going to be sharing in my Patreon group um, my personal page on pmp-art.com. I have so many albums of photos I've saved over the years. And so I'm going to give a video to my patrons. By the way, if you'd like to become a patron, here's how you can for $5 a month. So if you are one of my patrons or want to become one of my patrons, I'm going to be providing an, an instructional video on how you can access all of my reference photos that I have in the pmp-art.com. It's just a great site for free reference photos. And why not utilize the um, all the photos that I've saved? I have them categorized in files such as landscapes, flowers, bees, uh, trees, all kinds of things. So, hey, I want to give you guys access to that if you would like to use the photos I've chosen from that site. Now, as you can see, I have just simply drawn in not any real detailed drawing, the generalities of this with some pencil. I have wet the whole surface of the um, watercolor paper. This is what's called a wet on wet technique. And then I want it to have that soft, dreamy, um, painterly feel to this. And I'm sort of kind of doing a little bit of a value study here, adding a little bit more watercolor where I feel like it's darker. And that little area in the back where you see on the reference photo there, upper right hand corner, that's kind of like real far away. Maybe it's some trees, maybe some mountains, but it's going to stay very blue and very cool because it's in the distance. So I end up not darkening that very much back there. Um, actually, that ends up being that whole area back there. I liked it. It had a high key feel to it. And if you don't know what I mean by high key, it's literally just lighter values. There's nothing real dark about it. I'm, I want to make another, I have one high key video I've made, but I want to make another one. Now I have sped this up obviously, and um, I didn't feel like there was a whole lot of purpose for keeping this uh, watercolor portion all real time. Um, but basically when I do a watercolor underpainting, um, sometimes like like this time I just I needed to paint some I had had a lot I was doing with my husband and I wasn't sure if I was going to just play with watercolor and leave it it was later that I decided to add pastels and that's that's so neat that you actually can do that with the uh, clear gesso product but I usually try to keep things very loose and dreamy with watercolor and it usually does lend itself for a wonderful underpainting if you are going to apply pastel but watercolor has that benefit to it anyway and a general rule of thumb with watercolor one of the hardest things for me to get used to with watercolor was that it behaves the opposite way of pastels or oil or acrylic pastel oil and acrylic all have something in common in that it's typical uh, or general that you work dark to light and you can always get your lights on top of your darks with watercolor, that is not true. You have to preserve your lights. And it took me quite some time to get the hang of that. I was always painting my watercolor too dark. And uh, in this case, I wanted to keep the lightness to those flowers. If you squint your eyes and look at the reference image, um, they are lighter than a lot of the things in the background, but they're not as light as you think. A lot of the parts of those, of those flowers are in shadow. You've got a lot of the shadowy colors on the bottom parts of the flowers. So I am keeping them lighter in the watercolor, but they're going to darken up a little bit when I add the pastel. 
Um, so I'm just getting in, I might be getting a little too fussy with this, but I think at this point, like I said, I wasn't sure if I was just going to play around with watercolor or if I was actually going to um, do more with pastel. I couldn't help it. I had to break out the pastels. Um, so I'm using um, the watercolor right now to kind of block in some of the areas where I see some of the darker flowers I am, or the flowers that are more in the shadow. So I'm using my watercolor to get me a roadmap of uh, where things are in the painting. Okay, so for the rest of this watercolor portion, I will speed it up a bit. And you guys play with watercolor. Do some small watercolor studies. Just have some fun. Um, and it, you'll be like me. It'll, it'll take you a while. If you've, if you've come from other mediums over to watercolor, um, you might feel a bit frustrated at first, but um, don't. It's all part of the learning process. Okay, so I'm, I was going to put on music, but now I have to mention <laughs> I am using the watercolor now to put in some of the darker values of the grasses. I'm not getting crazy about um, drawing in every... Uh, it looks like I wrote SJ up there, my initials. I noticed that when I painted it, the upper left-hand corner, or ST. <laughs> um, I don't know, my brain just sees those shapes. But... Um, I'm not trying to get in blades of grasses here. I am trying to get in kind of where things are. I'm using the values, again, like a guide or a roadmap. You probably hear my dog lapping his water right now. I'm not going to edit that out, my sweet Jackson. Um, so anyway, uh, and it's also kind of building upon the values of where they are. And I really liked this photo. I didn't want to alter it a whole lot. Um, so, uh, okay, so I'm going to put on this lovely music. You guys enjoy the rest of the watercolor portion and I will be back when I add the clear liquid gesso. Thank you. 
Here is where I decided to actually add to the bottom of this. I had kind of cut it off um, to accommodate for my little bamboo holder that I have for my sketchbook and I decided I wanted to go ahead and utilize the whole surface of the watercolor paper so I just kind of uh, and at this point I realized I am going to add pastel so I knew that wouldn't be a problem once I add the pastel to kind of blend those two areas together. Uh, all right so now how are we going to add pastels to watercolor paper? Typically pastels need a little bit of grit to hold on to a surface. Uh, you can work on non-sanded surfaces but uh, a lot of you guys know that uh, it really is best to use a sanded surface. Well that's what this uh, wonderful product is for. I don't know whoever originally discovered this but clear gesso, not regular gesso, the clear has a little bit of grit to it. You can feel it actually in between your fingers and it is great if you just apply it on top of your watercolor, right on top of it. So your watercolor is actually an underpainting, the watercolor portion you've just done, and the pastel you will apply on top. After we apply this clear gesso, and another reason for the clear is because it's clear. If you put the regular white gesso on top of this, you just cover up your watercolor. You know, you, no purpose in even doing the watercolor underneath. So I'm applying this all over the whole surface, just kind of random strokes. I usually like my strokes to be more like X's and, and random than just all smooth across. I sometimes do my strokes directionally kind of as they as things grow. All right here's my pastel selections. What I did I kind of cheated. I had some pastels I've used for a previous painting. Oh look how dirty my hand is. Um, now I'm feeling, you, I can feel that grit on the paper but again the pastels that I chose I just kind of added to some that I had already in my little tray. Um, so now like I was saying that flower is actually darker than you would think. I'm getting, you see if you look at the reference image it's kind of the colors that I'm choosing. Um, one of the challenges I did have with this is um, some of the light, you know how I said work dark to light with pastels? I don't know if it was just my pastel selections or what but some of my pastels didn't um, apply the way I wanted them to on top of the flowers. It wasn't the same as like using UART paper. I think it's because of you know the clear gesso but I still like it. I still like this technique even though you can't get quite as many layers. I think it lends to a more painterly look. Uh, I also think it makes you more careful about your strokes and um, and also too it's a great way to save money and as artists especially when you're first beginning you don't want to always use the most expensive stuff if you're just practicing and you're not sure so sometimes this technique is really great this is what I was saying is that I didn't feel these colors were going on um, the way they would have like on UART paper um, so and that actually some of the light tips that I did there I realized later I had the value too light. Um, that is to me lighter in value than it was in the reference image and um, I kind of uh, work on that or work with that as I go along. Okay so as you can see we've got our watercolor underpainting, we have our clear gesso applied which is dried, gives us a nice little gritty surface and I wish I could paint this fast <laughs> but um, I'm speeding this up a bit just because the purpose of this video was mostly um, reminding you guys about this awesome technique. Um, now there's other products you can apply to make your own pastel surface. I have a video, I'll try to remember to share it at the end of this video. YouTube allows me to share a video at the end that you know you can click on if you want to go see that one. I'll try to remember to share it. It's a I think it's called eight different ways to make your own pastel surfaces. So um, that's a really beneficial video for beginners if you want to um, get some money saving methods to working with pastels. Um, so anyway hopefully that'll help some of you guys. So again I'm, I'm putting this video just on the uh, if you're seeing it here you're either seeing it on the Monet Cafe YouTube channel or my Patreon page. A lot of my videos now, I still don't want to forget my Monet Cafe channel, the totally free um, channel where I provide videos and tips and techniques um, because you're my heart. This is how I started and I always want to provide a free option but I have been lately giving some extra content to my patrons because they're supporting my channel so I'm trying to give them a little bit extra um, but again this video in particular is going to be the same on both. I'm not um, editing it 
um, out any content for the YouTube portion. So it'll be the same on both. But still, if you'd like to become a patron of mine, it is really helping me. It's blessing my life a lot. It's allowing me to buy. I, I bought the ring light that I, I put a little comment there. I had forgotten to turn my light on at the beginning of the video. You probably notice now it looks brighter. Um, because of my patrons, I was able to buy that light. Because of my patrons, I was able to buy my new computer. I had a computer crash and I needed a new um, MacBook Pro computer and I was also able to buy um, a new video uh, filming options. So everything is better because of my patrons. So Monet Cafe um, subscribers should applaud and thank my patrons for helping this channel to get better. So anyway, just bragging on my patrons because y'all are so awesome. Anyway, guys, and so were you guys in Monet Cafe. Enjoy this. I'm going to add some more music. I'll jump back in at the end, but you can um, kind of get an idea of how I'm working here. Uh, obviously, the little uh, kind of pale neutral marks I was making in the background are kind of my idea of where some of these flowers are going to go. Obviously, the flowers are kind of reseeding, uh, getting smaller lighter in value and cooler in color as they recede into the distance. Um, so anyway, enjoy, here's some music, and I'll be back.
Okay, so I'm wrapping it up here and you know, I just, these flowers just felt free and happy and full of life and brightness. I loved that, again, like the high key color in the background there um, where there weren't even really many dark values as it receded into the distance and just that pretty um, bluish teal in the background color there. Uh, I just, I don't know, I really liked the reference image too. Oh, this is something I wanted to show you. I don't often blend, but I felt like some of my grasses were just too textural and I wanted them to blend in a little bit more. So that's just a paper towel and I'm just kind of randomly just rubbing in a few places, not over blending by any means, but I felt like it really softened up some of those grasses. I didn't like some of the strong contrast that was going on um, with them. So it, it just kind of softened things up in general. All right, guys, so I'm finishing this up. I hope you will try this and I hope you learned something. Please comment. Uh, I love it when I hear you see your comments and uh, get to answer your questions if you have any on this YouTube channel here. Also, please like this video. If you haven't subscribed already, I would love it if you would subscribe. It all really does help me with my YouTube rankings and everything. And uh, consider if you would like to uh, show some of your own artwork. Um, we have a Monet Cafe art group on Facebook. Just go on Facebook, type in Monet Cafe art group, and uh, you just have to answer a few questions like how'd you hear about the group, that kind of stuff. And you can share your work. There are over 9,000 members in that group and there are some amazing artists who are helpful. Well, well not just me helping you, you get all kinds of people helping you uh, in that group. So check that one out. Again, if you'd like to become a patron, uh, there is a clickable link at the end of this video. I would so appreciate that. And uh, I hope you guys are blessed that this blessed you. And I just love being here and sharing with you guys. All right, guys, happy, happy painting.